Hi, I'm back after about a month and a half because six weeks and one day ago I stupidly and embarrassingly managed to injure myself pretty badly for anyone who hasn't seen this gem of a mess that I've made. And uh, it's been rough. It still is trying to find a comfortable position because there really isn't any. But hopefully I'll survive this video and the result won't suck too much. What I'll be doing today is something like what you see right here and I'll also use this as an opportunity to explain why I do certain things um, in the way that I do because I got asked about it. So let's dive right into it and we're going to start with the grid size which is going to be n and from here we are going to get the total number of items on the grid which is going to be p n times n and 32 times 32 for anyone who does binary that's 1024 so everything is going to be within the body and here in a style attribute we are going to pass that into the css as a custom property so that we can set the grid size when we do that so here while p gets decremented and is still positive we create our tile elements and now we are at a point where we can make our grid show up on the screen and we can animate stuff so let's do just that and for layout i'll be doing something slightly different this time and it's going to be inspired by this tip it's not going to be the exact same thing it's going to be a variation so what i'll be doing is going to be html body display grid right and uh, on the html i'm going to set a height of 100 percent and on the body at first i'm going to have the grid template and it's going to be the same template for both the rows and the columns so i can set it as a custom property so that's going to be repeat and we're going to use that to end the number of rows and the number of columns and uh, for the square size, let's say something like this. Sounds good enough. So now we are going to have grid uh, template. And I said that it's going to be the exact same template for both the rows and for the columns right here. And now we can have our tile elements and let's say we give them a background and we're going to start seeing something and things get more interesting if we scale them down so let's say that we're going to use a factor of one over three for that right so transform and here we're going to have scale and use that factor and now you can see them right there nicely but actually we're going to want to put this in a set of keyframes and if I could type that would be great like, people make fun of me for saying that but it is terribly frustrating when what I see what I've that I've put on the screen isn't what I intended to put on the screen and the problem isn't with the keyboard the problem is well they say the problem is between the keyboard and the chair but I'm not in a chair right now I'm in bed so the problem is in between the ears of the person typing which uh, is terribly frustrating for the person typing that is me so yeah So here we're going to have transform, translate, and here we're going to have some random values and we're going to randomly generate them right here. So um, here we are going to randomly generate some X and Y values and we're going to use some helper functions. So function, we already have a random function in JavaScript. But uh, the thing is, that only generates values between uh, 0 and 1. And we want something that generates values between a minimum and a maximum. And it takes a certain precision. So we're going to have maximum, minimum, and a precision, which is going to default to 0. So here we're going to have a return. And the minimum plus the desired range, which is the maximum minus the minimum times our random function so the function the random function provided by javascript and we want to have a certain precision so 
we're going to use that uh, precision and of course we want this to be a number okay now having done this we're going to also have a function that gives us a random sign which is going to be either one or minus one so function random sign right and we are going to use the powers of one so minus one raised to the power which is going to be rounding that uh, random so this gives us a random value between zero and one and this rounds it to the nearest integer which is either zero if it's smaller than 0 0.5 or one otherwise so minus one raised to the power zero gives us one minus one raised to the power one gives us minus one so same here so here we have something between zero and one and it's scaled to the range between the minimum and the maximum right and then we add the minimum okay so here we are going to have a random x coordinate and this is going to be the random sign times that random value which is going to be it's just going to have a maximum of 150 and a minimum of 50 and we are going to have something very similar for the y and here in a style attribute just like we have right here so this is going to be the x and then exactly the same for the y So this is going to be y and now oh those are going to be percentages so without units it's not going to work okay fix that oversight and uh, here as mentioned we are going to have them as custom properties so chaos now we are going to set an animation duration which is going to be two seconds and have here animation that animation duration let's use an easing out infinite alternate and you can see how we go from order to chaos and we can prettyify things if we set something like place content center this looks much nicer you can see how it's in the middle now okay now having done this we want that circular delay and we're going to get that if we set indices so column indices along the x-axis and row indices along the y-axis and the way that I do this is add here a style element and then have a loop in it so for let i going from zero all the way up to n increment this i at every step right and then here i'm going to set the styles and people have asked me why do i do this instead of setting i and j in the style attribute right here so they mean just um, basically having two nested loops let me just show you so this is going to have a different index going to be j right and all this stuff is going to be indented so um, right and then we're going to have i set to that uh, loop index and i just want to show you because um if you look at the compiled html oh come on okay i is set to zero for the first one i is set to zero i is set to zero and i get set to zero n times 32 times and then we move on and we set i to one n times 32 times and we're basically setting the exact same value n times for both the i and the same is going to happen for the j which we haven't set yet but it's the exact same thing we are setting i to the exact same value 
n times and we are setting j to the exact same value n times. Why not just set it once? And that's why I use that uh, style element. So let's just uh, undo all this uh, part right here. And um, we are going to have tall nth of type. And we're using nth of type and not nth child because tall is a sibling of the tall elements and it's before them. So it messes up the nth child index, but it does nothing on the nth of type index. And here we're going to have every n elements plus, and here we're going to have i plus one, and it's plus one because the nth of type index, just like the nth child index, is one based as opposed to the loop index, which is zero based. Okay, so here we are going to set the column index i to the loop index i, and then we are going to move on to the row indices. Now here we don't have every n elements, but we have after all the elements on the previous i rows. So each one of the previous i rows has n elements. So we have after n times i plus 1, and this is going to be j, the row index, set to the loop index. And now that we've done this, you can see how they are only set once to the same value. Um, yeah, this looks uh, nicer. So you can see i is set to 0 once, to 1 once, right? Like this. Super. Let's move on to the CSS. And the most interesting part of all. So we're going to want to get a middle index. That is going to be the middle between the first index and the last index. Let's get back here for a little bit. You can see the first index is 0 and the last index is 31, which is 32 minus 1, so n minus 1. The first index is 0, the last index is n minus 1. And um, so the average between them, 0 plus n, sorry, 1 extra dash. Okay, so it's going to be the average between these two, which is going to be 0.5 times, right? But that zero doesn't matter, so we can just uh, omit it from there, and we can get uh, rid of one set of parentheses that way. And um, so our middle index is going to be calc. Okay, now we are going to want to get the distance between every one of these tiles and the middle. So basically that's going to be both the horizontal distance between the i index of every tile and this middle index and the vertical index, the vertical distance between the vertical index j of every tile and this middle index m. That's basically 1d distance because we're computing a horizontal distance and a vertical distance. So one dimensional in both cases. So the 1d distance is the absolute value of the difference between the two. So the absolute value of the difference between m and i. Now, I've actually written an article about how to compute the absolute value in CSS, and that is the maximum between the value itself and its additive inverse, which is minus 1 times that. Now, in our case, we can just uh, revert the two terms. Sorry about that little freeze right there. So we are going to get the absolute value horizontally along the x-axis. So we are going to have m minus i. And here we're going to have i minus m, which is the additive inverse of this first one. Okay. And the same one for the other direction, for the y direction, along the y-axis. So that's along the rows. That's going to be the row index. And having done this, 
these values are always between 0 and m. So they are going to be 0 when i is m, because m minus m is going to be 0. And this value is going to be m in the case when i is either 0 or n minus 1, because n minus 1 is twice m, okay? So these absolute values go between 0 and m. And if we want to reduce them to the 0, 1 interval, we divide them by m. So we're going to have a ratio for i, and this is going to be absolute i over m, right? And similarly, we are going to have for j, so along the rows, vertically, right? So from top to bottom. And then we are going to want basically the radius of the circle centered in the middle of the grid on which each of these tiles, each of these individual tiles is situated. And we can get this from here. And it's going to be like kind of a relative value, right? A value between 0 and 1 just like we have these ratios between 0 and 1. So let me just show you a figure. A circle, like this is the equation for a circle, and we have the horizontal distance and the vertical distance. The horizontal distance is that absolute i, the vertical distance is the absolute j, right? So we square them and then we get the radius squared. And uh, that's going to be enough to get uh, our delay. So square, this is going to be calc. So the ratio i times itself, because we don't yet have power in CSS, but we can just multiply it with itself. And it's the exact same thing. Again, multiplied with itself. Right, and we are going to use that here. Now, this, uh, as uh, we mentioned, is between 0 and 1. This is between 0 and 1. If we multiply it with self, the result is going to be between 0 and 1. So something between 0 and 1 added with something between 0 and 1 gives us something between 0 and 2. And since we always want to have a negative delay, we are going to have to subtract 2 out of this uh, square volume. So subtract 2, and this we are going to multiply with the animation duration t. And you can see how we have that nice circular delay. And we can use a different kind of easing, which uh, we can get from here. So let's just uh, copy-paste that and um, put it right here. Okay. And this looks even nicer. So yeah, this is it. This is what I wanted to show you for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, if you like the work that I'm putting out for about 10 years now, and you want me to be able to do more in the future, please consider supporting it. You can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon. And by the way, huge thanks to everyone who has supported me so far because it has really made a big difference, uh, especially now with the medical bills and all. Uh, it's why I've been able to pay them and you know not run into any sort of trouble. So thank you very much for that. But if monthly support is not your style, there's also the option of a one-time donation. Or you can make this wild cat happy with a gift off her wish list. Everything is going to be linked in the description as well as the result and all the resources. Or the final thing that you can do is just share this to show the role what can be done in CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. Although we don't yet have power and trigonometric functions and all that good stuff in CSS, which I'm really, really hoping that Maybe it comes next year. Maybe Santa. I've been a good girl. Not really, but please Santa. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.